In this section, we're going to talk about two ideas. The first is continuously compounded interest, and the, se the second part is present value. For continuously compounded interest, we want to take a look at what happens when the compoundings start to increase. So for example, let's take $80,000 for 11 years at 11.7%. That's $80,000. I'll make this negative so that my future value will turn out positive. No additional payments, 11.7%. Oops, excuse me. That's my Excel variable. I want the 11.7 to be in my annual rate. Then compounded annually would be once for 11 years. Okay. Eventually, I'm going to look at semi-annually, quarterly, monthly, so on. So I'm going to change this number of compoundings. And I want to change only this first cell and have everything else update. So my interest rate will be my annual rate divided by whatever the compoundings turn out to be. And the number of periods will be compoundings per year multiplied by the number of years. The reason that these variables are colored is because those are the variables that Excel uses. Excel doesn't use annual rate or compounding. It doesn't, can't read those. Instead, future value is found from, so first I do the rate. That's the rate per period. Then the number of periods. Then the payment. Then the present value. Ignore the type because in our class we always do end of period. Future value, 270,193. Okay, let me copy this. And I want to paste it into here. And that was once per year. Okay, now, what if I go semi-annually? So what if I compound it twice each year? Then I would expect my interest to earn interest. All I have to change is the compoundings. And when I hit Enter, I should see the number of periods be twice as often, so 22. The rate be half as much. Everything else stays the same except my future value. Let me copy that down. As I copy these, I'm copying the, the values so that as I change the formula, they don't all update. Okay, then I want to look at the number of dollars gained by compounding more often. So the dollars gained would be 279,000 subtract 270,000. So that's 9,000 extra dollars just by letting my interest compound twice instead of once. So quarterly, four times each year, I want to see how much of an effect that will have. I'm going to go up and change my compoundings to four. That makes my future value 284,000. And the dollars gained is only 5,000 more. So I did twice as many compoundings from annually to semi-annually, and I did twice as many compoundings from semi-annually to quarterly, but I didn't get twice as much money. Let's go to monthly. 12 times, now that's triple what I had for quarterly. Let's see what happens to the future value. 287. That's only 3,500 more dollars. So the even though I'm compounding more and more often, I'm getting more money, but it's a diminishing effect. Daily, daily compounding, 365 times a year. That's almost 30 times more often, 289,000. 1,700 more dollars. Okay, what if I went every minute? 525,600 minutes in a year. Make that my number of compounds. Now my interest per, per minute is so low that, it, that Excel went to scientific notation. See the capital E? Future value, 289, 752. That's only $59 more. Going from every day, once a day, to every minute, which is 3,600 times as often. So even though I have this really high number of compoundings, and I am getting more money, but the, it's a very diminished effect. Okay, what if I just went some, I don't know, 2 million times each year? 
and have that be the number of compounds. 289,752,35. I went up by 3 cents. Well, there is a mathematical idea that's called continuous compounding, which would be what if the number per year were infinity? What if you could do infinitely many compoundings per year? Now, I can't put infinity in as a number into Excel, but the mathematicians figured out that the future value is the present value times e raised to the rt. And usually this is written amount is principal e rt. It's called the PERT formula for obvious reasons. That r is the annual rate, so you don't cut it into pieces at all using this formula. P, it would be 80,000 times E raised to the 11.7 percent 11 years. Put that into your calculator and you will get 80,000 E to the 1.287 80,000 times 3.62190. Okay, now I only do this so that you can check your calculations, make sure that you know how to get the E calculated correctly. 289,752.36.22. Okay, that is the most that you can ever get from 80,000 for 11 years at 11.7 percent due to compounding. So it's never going to get to 37 cents, no matter how often you compound it. To get 37 cents or more, you'd have to either go for a longer amount of time or get a higher interest rate. So when you do infinity compoundings, to get your future value, you change your formula to A equals P times E raised to the RT. So that rounded to the nearest penny, you only make one cent different between two million times a year and infinity times a year. So that's the idea of continuous compounding. It has its own formula. So whenever you're asked to compound continuously, you have two options, honestly. You can either use the formula or you can do Excel, but you have to do a lot of compoundings. And then the question becomes, well, how many is a lot? Well, that's the hard thing. It depends on the interest rate, and it depends on the number of years. But the formula never fails. It will get you straight to that answer. There was one other kind of, just as a review, one other kind of interest that had its own formula. It's a good time to review it since we've been using Excel so much. For simple interest, the amount was principal times 1 plus annual rate times number of years. Let's try that for this uh, example. 80,000 times 1 plus interest rate of 11.7% for 11 years. That is $182,960. So this is a good uh, indicator of what happens with simple interest. Let's just put that right in here. For simple interest, there aren't any compound periods, and you end up with $182,960, which is just under $100,000 less than you would get by compounding once. This shows why we don't use simple interest for periods longer than a year, because it, when you don't allow your interest to earn interest, the difference is very large. Okay, in WebAssign you've got problem number two, which gives you a uh, amount invested in a number of years. You'll fill in the simple interest amount and then compound annually, semi-annually, quarter, monthly, daily, just like we did here, and then compound it continuously. So remember that continuous compounding and simple interest, no compounding, that those have separate formulas. The rest of these you can use Excel. Let's look at this problem in the homework. We have $9,000 invested at 8.5% compounded continuously. So we already know that we're going to need the PERT formula. 
Find the future value after three and a half years. So the principal or the present value is 9,000 times E raised to the interest rate, 8.5% for three and a half years. Okay, now make sure that that multiplication is happening up in the exponent. So depending on your calculator, you might need to put an extra set of parentheses around that. That amounts to $12,118.395 five three so that would round to twelve thousand one hundred eighteen dollars and forty cents okay could we do this in Excel the answer is yes we could do it in either one of two different ways first we could use the formula and take nine thousand times by e is the function exp, the, the one and only exponential function, exp of 0 0.085 times 3.5, close off the e raised to the, there you go, 1218.39538. Your other option is to use Excel like you would do for compound interest and just do a lot of compounding. So present value is 9,000, no additional payment, annual rate 8.5%, 3.5 years. Compounding is what we're going to change, but once we get numbers in there, the rate will be the annual rate divided by that many compounds. I get an error here because I don't have anything in the box yet. And then the number of periods will be the compoundings times the years. Okay, so here we go. Compounded continuously, that's a lot. What if I do 5,000 compounds per year? See, now my rate fills in and my periods fill in. Let's get our future value to fill in. Rate per period, number of periods. Payment, present value, ignore the type, 12,18,36. So 5,000 compounds a year, I'm off from the correct answer by 4 cents. If I compound more often, so now it's 38 cents. Well, how do I know how many compoundings will be enough? You do it until, see so now it's 39 cents, you do it until this number doesn't change and you're probably going to want to open up a few more decimal places here so that you can see what will happen. Let's do 100,000. That's, That's 0.3938. Let's go to a million. One one eight three nine five. So already this answer would round up to forty cents. But if I didn't already know my correct answer, let's just do thirty. Okay. Twelve thousand one eighteen point three nine five six. So at this point, you would have to just take a leap of faith and say, I think that this number won't change anymore and then you can type your answer in. If you say, I, if, if that doesn't feel secure enough, then you can put it into the PERT formula. So in the previous sections and in the discussion we just had, we're seeing that the compound effect is significant. So $5,000 and 9.6 percent for one year, if it's compounded annually, that future value is 54.80. But if it's compounded monthly, the future value is 5,501.6935. Okay, now what I want to do is take a look at what percent yield was that over the course of that one year. So to change it into a percent, I take the ending amount, 54.80, and I divide it by the base amount, which is the beginning amount, 5,000, and this becomes, not surprisingly, 1.096, which means 9.6% interest was earned. However, by compounding monthly, 
I got a higher amount. So if I look at the percent yield now, 5501.6935 divide by 5000, I get 1.1003387. When I interpret that, that's 110%. So the yield is actually 10.03387%. So due to the effect of compounding, the stated or nominal 9.6% acts like 10%, 10.03%. This is what we call the effective rate of interest, or the annual percentage yield, or sometimes they call it the annual percentage rate. You've probably heard APR more than you've heard APY, but they're all talking about the same thing using just slightly different syntax. So I want to look at an interest rate. If I allow it to compound, it's going to act like more. So the question is, what annual rate with no compounding would be the same as the compounded rate? So for this example with compounding monthly, 9.6%, if it's compounded monthly, it acts like 10.03387%. Or another way to say it is that if I took $5,000 at 10.03387%, compounded annually, so no intermediate compoundings, then I would get the same $5,501.69. So you want to find the future value and divide it by the present value and then interpret the decimal that you get and figure out what the percent increase was. Okay, now, it turns out that the annual percentage yield, it doesn't depend on how much was invested. Instead, it only depends on the interest rate and how often it's allowed to compound. So let me show you how this works. Suppose that instead of investing $5,000, I invested $3,000, but it's still at 9.6% interest for one year, and I'm still going to compound annually. Well, now that will grow to $3,288. To turn that into a percent, I take the future value and divide it by the present value, and lo and behold, I get the very same 1.096, because I earned 9.6% interest $1 will earn 9.6% and $3,000 will earn 9.6% and a million dollars will earn 9.6%. So it doesn't matter what the beginning number was. When I change that to compounding monthly, then the future value changes to 3301.0161. And then I take the ending amount of the investment and I divide it by the base amount, which is the present value, get the same 1.100338. The percent stays the same. So 9.6% compounded monthly acts like 10.03387% no matter what the present value was. So now, knowing that, we can save ourselves a little bit of grief and we can use Excel. Use $100 for your present value. Why? Because when you come over here and divide by your present value, you'll be dividing by 100. Well, dividing by 100, that is a per cent. So $100 at 9.6%, the future value becomes $109.60. And then when you divide that, all it does is move the decimal over. See, those numbers are the same as here. If you compound monthly, here's your future value on $100. $110.0339. See, right there is the interest that you earned. There's 10.0339%. So annual percentage yield can be figured off of any present value. But it's easiest if you use a nice present value, like either $1 or $100. Let's go to the homework. 
Life insurance policies, some premiums pay for the cost of the insurance and the remainder can go toward the cash value of the policy and it can earn interest like a savings account would. There are two companies. One offers 4.4% compounded monthly. The other offers 4.41% but it's only compounded semi-annually. So I want to find a way to compare those two and see which one is the higher yield. And the way you do that is to find the annual percentage yield. So let's take 4.4% compounded monthly. And we're looking for an annual rate, so for one year. And that's 12 compoundings times one year. Find the rate per period, no additional payments, present value, you can make it whatever you want. So I'm going to make it 100, I'm going to make it negative 100, that way my future value turns out positive. And then find the future value. So future value is dollars, it's not a percent, but we're going to be able to read the percent because we chose our dollars well. $100 grows to $104.4898. So what interest was earned? Well, it's pretty clear to see that $4.4898 out of 100 is what was earned. So the percent earned would be 4.49. So the stated rate is 4.4, but it acts like 4.49. Okay, what about the second company, 4.41% and it's only compounded twice each year, so change that. Everything else should update. 4.4586 on a base of 100, that's 4.46% when you round. So which company turned out to be higher? Company 1 did because the compounding made up for the slightly smaller stated rate. Let's try another one of these. Find the annual percentage yield for an investment at the following rates. So 7.8% is what's stated, but it compounds, so it's going to act like more than that. 7.8% compounded 12 times a year. We're always doing one year for an annual percentage yield no additional payment. Present value, you could choose any amount you want. I think it's easiest to choose $100 because then I can read off the effective rate. What percent interest was earned on $100? Well, that would be 8.085, which would round to 8.09. Well, let's take a look at that. Let me look at more uh, decimal places. Oh, I was rounding a rounded number. See, Excel rounded the 0.49 up to a 5, but looking at that full answer, that's true. It would be 8.08%, not 8.09. What about 5% if it's compounded continuously? So compounding continuously, I switch to a formula. My future value or amount is now principal e to the rt. My principal, I could choose any number, I'll choose 100. e raised to the 5%. Time is always one year with an APR. That gives me an answer of $105.12710. And that's a dollar amount, that's a future value, but to change it into a percent, you would divide it by 100, or you can say what percent interest was earned. Well, it was $5 and 0.127. That's dollars out of 100, 5.127, or rounded, 5.13. Okay, now I want to talk a little bit about present value and the meaning of present value. 
We've said that present value is the amount of money that's sitting on time, at time zero on the number line. That's still true. And that future value is the amount in the account at the end. That's true. Think of this as the balance in the account. But now we've got these four payments of $100 each. So with no interest at all, we're looking at $400. That's, I'll call that a face value of that money. But let's put interest per year at 8%. Now I want to talk about the present value of those four payments, which means how much money would I have to put into an investment in order to withdraw $100 at the end of each of the next four years? Okay, now the future value is going to be what do I want the balance to be in the account, or is there any additional payment that's going to be made? So here my future value will be set to zero because I want to completely exhaust that account. I don't want any balance left over and there's no additional balloon payment that's going to happen there. So if I put this into Excel, my payment is $100, my rate per period is 8%, I've got four periods which is the same as four payments. My future value is set to zero and now I find the present value. rate, periods, payment, future value, and ignore the type. 331.21. So $331 today is enough to fund four $100 withdrawals because the interest will make up the missing $69 in here. Okay, one time quickly, let me show you how this works. You take $331.21 and it sits in the account for a year over what, which time it earns 8% interest. So now you have 108% of your money, which is $357.7068. And then at the end of one year, you make a $100 withdrawal. So that payment happened. Now you have $257 left and it earns money for the next year. So it will earn 8% uh, interest, so times it by 1.08, and you get 278.3233. And then you make a $100 withdrawal, so that payment happened. Now you have $178 left with interest that has to fund the next two $100 payments. So that remaining balance goes on for the next year, earns 8% interest grows to $192.5892. You make your $100 payment, or your withdrawal, I should say, and then you have $92.58 left. It earns 8% interest, and that $92.58 grows to be $100. And then you make your payment, and your balance is zero. That's your future value. So $331.21 now is the same as this $400 spread over time. If we think of this in terms of a loan, if your loan amount is $331.21 and you get that money today, then you can pay it back in four easy payments of $100 each, and that means that you paid 8% interest. Let's look at some homework problems. Suppose a state lottery prize is paid in 20 payments of $450,000 each at the end of each of the next 20 years. What's the total of all the payments received? So just the face value of the payments. That's 20 payments of $450,000 each. That is a $9 million lottery prize. But the $9 million isn't all paid out today, and money today is not the same thing as money 20 years from now. Instead of receiving annual payments, the winner can opt to receive a single payment today, but you don't get the, the value of the prize if you're not willing to wait for the interest over time. Instead, you receive the present value of the prize. So find 
the amount of today's payment if the interest rate is 7%. Okay, this is what it would, this lottery prize looks like. Here's today. We're trying to figure out the amount we would get today. That's a present value. The payments of 450000 come at the end of each year. So those are the equal sized payment amounts. They happen for 20 years. Is there any additional money besides that last payment that's going to happen on this last day? No. So the future value is zero. Let's fill in our amounts. So 20 years. The annual rate is 7%. Compounded once per year because they're annual payments, so annual compoundings. That's 20 periods. There we go. 20 periods and my rate was 7%. Payment of $450,000. I'm trying to find the present value. The future value will be nothing left in the account. Present value rate. Periods, payment, future value, ignore the type. Widen out the cell so you can see that you will take home today four million seven sixty seven three oh six forty one. So being willing to wait the twenty years to get all of your money made a difference of about four point three million dollars to your payout. Okay now what if interest is eleven percent? Is that good for you or is it bad for you? In this case it's bad because the present value is subtracting out the interest. So more interest will get taken out from here. Let's change our annual rate to 11 percent. Now on the same $450,000 payments over 20 years, $3.5 million. Let's go ahead and look at one more where we're trying to solve for the number of quarters. A personal account is earmarked as a retirement supplement and it has 342000 but only 300000 of it is going to be used to establish an annuity. So that's money that we're going to put into a fund today and turn it into payments over time. The annuity earns 6% and it's compounded quarterly. 6% compounded quarterly. How long will it be, so we don't know the number of years, until the account balance is zero? Well, the balance would be the future value, so we want the future value to be nothing. Present value was $300,000. i will make it negative because it was invested, so it left my pocket. The payments are going to be $5,000. That's money I'm going to get back. So I'll make that a positive because it's coming into me. It's super important for those two numbers to have opposite signs. One of them is an out cash outflow and the other is a cash inflow. Interest rate, 6% divided into four equal pieces. Periods, I don't know because I don't know the years. But actually what I'm trying to find is the number of quarters. So Excel can't tell me the years. What it can tell me is the periods. So that's what I'm looking for. That formula is called in per. Put in the rate per period, the payment amount, positive 5,000, present value is negative. I want the account balance to end up to be zero. That's 154.65 periods. Okay, round your answer up to the nearest quarter. So that would be 155. Okay, one little word on this. It doesn't say to round to the nearest, it says to round up to the nearest. So if I had 154.23, 
I would still round up and get 155. Okay, I think between that and your other homework videos, you should be okay. Good luck, everybody, and I'll see you next time.